Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. Abstract class and final keyword object class. If time persists, we'll start with FEGS as well. So from today onwards, if you guys have any general questions related to the topic, just ask at the break. We'll be having a break at nine o'clock and ask at the break time. Or else you can wait until 10 o'clock and we can discuss once after that. Because currently it is taking more than 10, 15 minutes to clear a general doubt. If you guys have a doubt, out, which is related to the topic itself and if we couldn't able to move without knowing the topic then you can ask me to explain the topic again or else you can ask specific to that particular topic if you have general doubts just make a note we'll discuss once after the class yeah sure Vijay And one more thing, I'm forgetting. So, I'm planning to take one more class during the weekend. It will be on Saturday morning at 10:30 a.m. EST. So, if at all, if any one of you have concerns or issues related to the timing, just let me know. Present here four people. No, general class only. I think. I have received assignment related to inheritance from three or four people. So, what about rest of them? Did you guys have any issues in understanding the program? I didn't get time to work. I didn't know that I have to send you. Oh, no, that's fine. If at all, if you are able to complete yourselves and able to dissolve, uh, able to identify that it's working fine, then we are good. Yeah, only one question. Uh, mm -hmm. How to initialize super class like uh, just to uh, create object and automatically okay. uh, then automatically super class will be initialized, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the only doubt. Mm -hmm. Initialization in the sense super class constructor will be called automatically. Right. I'll show you mm -hmm. one example during the end of the class today. So by that you'll be able to understand clearly. Okay. Okay, let us start today's class. Today we'll deal with, uh, I already mentioned about the topic, so let us start with dynamic method dispatching one more time. 
dynamic method dispatching take our example program itself this is the program which i have sent for assignment so here vehicle is our top level class which is our super class and car and van both are extending from vehicle class so here car and van both are subclasses and in the same way toyota and minivan are subclasses as you can see this is following here multi level inheritance multi level in the sense we car which is extending vehicle and in the same way toyota which is extending car so you can say that toyota is extending vehicle as well because whatever the properties that are available at the vehicle level you will be able to get all the properties at your toyota class level the reason for that is when you extend a class you already know that you are going to get some properties from vehicle class except private variables or private members so that means the properties are available at car level now and in the same way car also had some other extra methods you can see that get car model is one method which is declared at the car level so the toyota class is able to access all the methods that are available at the car class level and all the methods or variables at vehicle class level so this kind of inheritance is called as multi level inheritance so coming to dynamic method dispatching here you can see that the display details method is declared at the top level when you say vehicle vehicle is your super class let us say i am declaring one super class reference and i want to point to a subclass object which is toyota new toyota superclass reference you can point to subclass object that we have already seen now when you say vehicle object dot you are only able to access the members that are available with respect to vehicle reference because the method access or the member access is defined by the reference but not the referred object it only defines by the vehicle reference but currently as you can see the display details method is an overridden method at car level and overridden at toyota level normally when you call vehicle object dot let us take one another normal method get engine type so when you call get engine type it will go and call the definition that is available at the vehicle class level in the same way when you call vehicle object dot vehicle object dot display details the display details is also mentioned at vehicle class level but as you can see the display details is a overridden method which is available at this level and at this level also see even though if it was it wasn't overridden at this level you can still override the method because the method display details is available at the top level class no matter whether it was declared at this level or at this level you can still call that the display details method is overridden from this place to this place so when you are calling a overridden method here you are calling a overridden method java will go and verify the method display details whether it is available at vehicle class level or not of course it should available at the vehicle class level then only you can call the method by using vehicle reference and once after that java will verify what kind of object that you are pointing currently you are pointing to toyota object 
when you are pointing to toyota object with a vehicle class reference java will first verify during the run time whether the method got overridden at subclass or not instead of directly executing the definition it will first verify whether the method got overridden at the object level what object it will verify it will check the object creation so currently at the toyota level the method got overridden and because of dynamic method dispatching dynamic method dispatching means the method resolution or method execution will be bind at run time instead of compile time at compile time we can see that when we call the display details method it will be going to call the display details available at vehicle class level but during the run time jvm understands that this is a overridden method and when a overridden method was invoked by a superclass reference it was supposed to call the method definition available at subclass level because of dynamic method dispatching it was able to call the display details method available at toyota class level and one more thing is when you are calling the vehicle reference when you are calling the methods using vehicle reference it is the reference variable which decides what kind of numbers are accessible so only thing only difference is with respect to overridden methods so if you try to call the calculate horsepower method which is declared and defined at toyota class level you will be going to get a message specifying that the me the method was not declared at vehicle class level ultimately it is the reference variable which decides what kind of member it is accessible so currently calculate horsepower was not available at this level and that means you are not able to call this method so this kind of approach this is called as multi level inheritance so because we are following the inheritance hierarchy for multiple levels and in the same way there is one another in inheritance also which is multiple inheritance multiple inheritance is nothing but let me open a paint See, this is called multi level inheritance class 1 class 2 and this is class 3 so when you say multi level class 2 extends from class 1 class 3 extends from class 2 this we have already seen so multi level so let us take in the normal scenario multi level multi level we have seen this is called multiple inheritance so that means one class let us say one child class let me fill out the names this is super class 1 and this is super class 2 and this is our sub class so currently the super class super class 1 and super class 2 both are available and sub class we have declared one sub class so this kind of inheritance is normally called as multiple inheritance because one sub class is getting the properties or member access from two different classes so what we are doing a sub class is extending both the classes super class 1 and super class 2 this kind of inheritance normally called as multiple inheritance but java doesn't support multiple inheritance java doesn't support multiple inheritance the reason for that is let us say we have declared a method called display details here or let us say you have declared a method called display details here 
and when you try to access this or let us say when you created an object at the subclass level and when you are trying to call the method for a definition. So at this point of time at the subclass level Java does not understand whether to call the display details declared at the superclass 1 level or the display details declared at superclass 2 level. So because of these kind of issues or contingency issues Java does not allow multiple inheritance. So which means you can't extend more than one class. You can put a comma and write one more class here. Let us say there is a duplicate box class. So here you can see that it is giving some error syntax error on tokens. So it does not expect Java does not expect a comma when you use extends keyword and it still expects only the open trace. There is one special class which is object class which is a super class for all our regular class files. So whatever the class that you are writing currently we have written until now we have written plenty of classes box class box weight argument passing any other class. So all these classes are subclasses of one class which is object the class. But any time did we write box extends object class? No, we didn't write any time because this object class is getting extended by each and every subclass and it will be done implicitly by our Java compiler. implicitly by our Java compiler. So it is not required for us to write extends object. Here you can see that box class. We did not write anything related to object class. Extends object. This will be automatically added by our compiler during the compilation process. But here when we come back to box weight class here it was already extending box class. So that means it will not add extends object at this level because Java knows that when you are extending a class which is box class, the box class is inherently extending object to class by using multi level inheritance. So that means inherently your box weight class is extending object to class. So whenever you extend any class you already know that by using inheritance you have the access to all the properties and methods of that class. So here also even though if you write or if you did not write the box class you have the access to all the methods of object class. So how can we see the methods of any class? How can we see? the methods or members of any class. Java P. Okay, thank you. Java P, Java dot lang dot object. Forget about Java dot lang dot. We will discuss in later class. See the reason why I am using command prompt A is we just want to be familiar with Java P command. Even you can just go to Google and type it for Java dot lang dot object API. You will be able to see the same scenario in an HTML format. So currently you can see that the Java dot lang dot object has these many methods. 
and here you can see that it consists of a static block as well and it has plenty of methods and this is the constructor here these are the methods that are available these methods the wait notify notify all these methods will discuss when we enter threads multi threading and the remaining methods you can take a look at the remaining methods and understand the api so the whenever you want to know the details of any class you first need to know what are all the methods available in that class and what is the purpose of the class file by looking at the api and then what are all the members that are available members in the sense properties and methods so currently you can see that there are plenty of methods available with respect to object class so let us take a look at them in brief equals method and then as i mentioned there are wait notify notify all method so these methods are used for threading multi threading programming equals method is used to compare two objects to compare two objects and then the last one you can see protected void finalize method go back to our box class once currently what we have mentioned our box class is extending object class which means i have the access to all the members of object class so inside inside print dimensions method or calculate volume method click on control control space when i click on control space normally it will provide all the members available in that class that we already know here you can see that there are some additional methods equals method finalize method get class method hash code method notify notify all wait method you can see that wait method is an overloaded method so all these methods how we are able to see here because inherently this class the box class is extending object class which means you have the access to all the properties and methods of object class so when you want to call a method to string let us say declare a string data equal to data when you call or else declare a variable at declare an instance variable string data equal to data so now i am calling data dot to string method currently the to string method is available at object level and the method was available at string level also when you call to string method you can see that there is one to string method available at your object level also so the method call will be going to resolve to this particular method defined in object class and in the same way when you call wait method or when you call equals method let us take some other method so i am calling get class method you can see that you are able to call the get class method and this get class was declared in your object class see just like how you are able to access the members from your box class within your box wait it's also the same way to access the methods with respect to object class one another important class is method i'm sorry protected void finalize method so if you guys remember the finalize method which is called by your jvm during the destruction of the object so the reason why we have asked to specify the same signature during that time is because this is an overridden method 
and you are going to override the definition from your object class. This is the method. You are going to override the definition that is available at the object class and you should provide the overridden version only because that method, the finalized method will be called by JVM automatically and it will make use of the dynamic method dispatching concept and it will resolve the call to underlying method call. See, as of now, we have mentioned about declaring superclass reference to subclass object. So currently, we know that object is at the top level of all the classes. So that means you can take object as a superclass reference and you can create any object. Object is your superclass. So that means superclass can be pointed to, superclass reference can be pointed to any of the subclass object. That is very, very important because uh, most of the time, all the APIs, they will return only object class. Let us take a look at the image and we'll be able to understand clearly. This we have already discussed superclass to subclass inheritance concept. All the public variables, they are directly available to the subclass. But whatever the private members, they are not at all accessible to subclass. The multiple inheritance, it is not at all supported in Java. And the current thing is the box class and the box weight class. Here you can see that the object class, it is specified in dots or broken lines, which means it is available implicitly. When you have extended like this, the box weight is also capable of accessing all the properties and variables, sorry, methods from object class. If you want to make sure, let us go to See here in my source directory, I have a file called argument passing dot Java file. Or else, let us make use of the Java P command. Here itself, we can see in employee class. So here in employee for employee, I'm applying Java P. When I apply Java P, here you can see that it has declared all the methods that we already know, but in the first line, you can see that it has specified public class employee, which extends java.lang.object. But did we mention java.lang.object within our employee class? See, here I haven't written anything related to extends related to employee class. But when I compile the file for Java P, you can see that it was able to produce the extends java.line.object, which got implicitly added by our compiler. So object is the superclass for all our regular classes. So that means when you go and create let me change here. So here you can see that the box class, I'm creating an object obj equal to box one. I can easily point like this because object is the super class and I can directly point to box one, box object by using super class reference. But what about in the reverse way? Let us say now you got an object, obj is your object, you want to convert this to box object now. You can't convert from 
a superclass object to subclass reference. So here superclass object is obj and subclass reference is box1. The superclass reference which was declared or available in the past or it was at the higher level you can say higher data type and you can convert to a smaller data type directly and you should specify type casting explicit type casting which is you need to specify you want to convert to box object just like how we have done with respect to our data types here also when we want to downgrade the level here we are downgrading the level from object reference or object to a box reference which means we are downgrading the level then you should follow the explicit type casting and then only you are able to access the box one reference. Let us take another example. So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you are interested in a demo program, please register on our homepage on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-17615. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.